funnily enough, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, oh, this is great, I'm gonna get this for my kid for Christmas. I recommend you read it first. Uh, there are a couple of big naughty words in there. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's more about behind the scenes of what a driver goes through. The behind the scenes of Formula One, the stuff that we don't normally talk about in F1 because one because we're focused on our racing but two because it's very it can be very long-winded for example how a car feels throughout a corner the balance of a car and things like that so it's it's the kind of book that Formula One needs uh, I feel Formula One is a great sport but the personalities of the drivers you, you can't see so much I think the last couple of years it has got better I haven't just talked about the positives of my career. You know, there's a lot of negatives and I think it's important to mention them. First of all, to get into Formula One is very difficult. There's only 20 seats. It's not like football or, or rugby or, or many other sports where there are lots of individuals and teams. It's very competitive and, and at the moment it's in a great place. You know, I think there's a lot of very young, a lot of young talent coming through, T even teenagers, Lando Norris, British, British driver, uh, doing fantastic. People can really um, they, they like to see the personalities behind the scenes because then they can f they found their driver that they can support. It's not just, oh, he's really quick, we're going to support him. They like individuals and they go, right, I like this guy, I'm going to follow his career. And I think that's what's going to get more and more people interested in Formula One. This sport is such a team sport. You know, the driver needs to do his part, but also the whole team of hundreds of people need to do their part. So it's a little bit more difficult and you do need a bit of luck to find your, yourself in the right place at the right time. Obviously, you know, you're always compared against your teammates, so if you do a much better job than your teammate, you get the opportunity to get into a, uh, an even better car or a better team. But um, I won my first race in 2006, um, which I think was a, a very important part of my career. People could see what I could do if I had the right equipment. But then it took me another three years to actually win my next race, and then, which led on to winning the World Championship. After I won the World Championship, I spent many years in McLaren, which were great years. The last sort of three years of my career were tough because we couldn't really see light at the end of the tunnel. We were struggling to be competitive. Um, the only thing that I had to you know, judge my, my performances on was my teammate, which was Fernando Alonso, a two-time world champion. So I had that, and, but that was the only thing that really kept me going in the last couple of years in F1. When you win a Grand Prix, the emotion is so high and the adrenaline is so high because it's, you're living in the moment. A world championship is very different because it's more of a relief um, because you've gone through the whole season fighting for that world championship. And I never lost the lead of the championship throughout the whole year, but still there was so much pressure. The difference is, you know, when I wake up in the morning, I think about winning the world championship. I don't think about winning races. So very different emotions, but the world championship is the one that sticks with you for forever. I don't know if it's the same for all sportsmen, but as racing drivers, most drivers I know are insecure in some way about their uh, ability. And yeah, it's a funny one because it doesn't come across on TV. But uh, and you don't want to show that because it's it's a weakness. And then uh, it's a strength for another driver if they know that you have that weakness. So um, yeah, I mean there would always be days where you know you're on top of the world and you've done an amazing lap and you're like wow that was awesome what a great job i did but there were other days like yeah maybe i'm not as good as what i thought i was at that moment in time and you know you make mistakes too often and you're just not quick enough at other occasions and yeah this it's a real mental roller coaster racing an f1 after my my dad passed away was always tricky because he was always there to bounce things off of whether it was a good race or a bad race and it was just a completely different atmosphere when he wasn't around. For me in F1 now, it's very different because I'm a pundit. I'm looking at it from the other side. So I, I don't need that family support um, as much. And I'm really enjoying it. 